yourself, well, why is my mom my role model? What makes her so good? Um, and, if, and if you've picked someone and you really can't think of reasons that they're your role model, then you would pick another person maybe who you can't think of reasons for. So there's always techniques to combat writer's block or if you just, if you're sitting there and you just feel like, I can't think of anything to say, then there are different ways that you can do it. Just uh, focus on specific parts of the prompt. So for instance, in this one, uh, who is your role model? Think about what qualities your role model has, why these are important to you, write an essay telling who your role model is and explaining why. So even if you just can't think of a role model, then think of some qualities that you think are, are important for people to have and sort of work backwards. Who are people who have those qualities? So for instance, I might say brave, adventurous, and I would work backwards and I might think of who has those qualities and think about my sister or think about someone in history. So, yeah, it's... it's there's a lot of different ways to combat writer's block when you just can't think of something to say. Choosing the right... Yeah. Yes, sorry? Can I just step in quick? Um, yes. Can you just reiterate again for them um, uh, about if they've chosen somebody and then they really can't think of stuff for that person, that it is okay to pick somebody else? That obviously if you can't think of something, then maybe that's not the right person. Have you ever experienced that and how do you deal with that to pick another person? Yes, and I have definitely had that because I had, um, you know when I'm doing comms in school and stuff, of course there's going to be questions where I'm just thinking, you know, this, I feel like this doesn't apply to me at all, I don't know where, what uh, an exam list could be. So for instance, one time I had a prompt where I was supposed to tell about a time where I had learned something from someone unexpected, I think it was, or from something unexpected. And I was thinking, you know, what am I going to do? And originally I thought maybe I would do it uh, like being in France and, and sort of learning a little bit of French. And I thought, you know, I can't really think of, I didn't really learn that much French and there wasn't really it. Um, that, that isn't really a good idea and I couldn't think of anything else. So I decided to switch. I decided instead to talk about my trip to Los Angeles and what I had learned from my experience on the trip because I could think of several different experiences and several different stories to tell within my piece of writing. So it's always okay, let's say that you, you, for that role model one, you've picked your mom to be your role model, but now suddenly you can't think of reasons why your mom is your role model aside from that she's your mom. Okay, you know, that, that probably doesn't bite you, your, your mom is probably great, but um, your mom isn't standing over your shoulder reading your, reading your response, so it probably won't hurt her feelings um, if, you, if you're just super stuck, uh, then you could, you could do like Martin Luther King Jr. instead. You know, that's, that's not a bad idea. Um, so, it's okay to have something you picked, it doesn't work out, and to switch it. And it's a whole lot better than writing a really weak response because you can't think of any details or reasons to support it. Excellent, thank you. Oh yeah. Um, so now for choosing the right words. The reason, uh, why would you want to be worrying about what words you're using? Caitlin. Uh, to make uh, the reader want to read more of it. That's one thing. So when, how many of you have ever read something and, and you get a little bit bored maybe because of the words they're using? Have you ever gotten kind of bored reading something? Yeah. Yes. I see, I see a couple of raised hands. So any of you who have started reading a book, maybe it's a really big book or maybe it's a really hard book or maybe it's even a really easy book. And you're reading it and you're thinking, oh, this is really a drag. So maybe, for instance, if you've ever read a Dick and Jane book, it's all about uh, Jane sees Spot. Spot sees Jane. Jane runs after Spot. And you know, after a couple of pages of that, you get a little bored because obviously you're, you're too old for it. And, and it gets boring after a while if you're in Jane sees Spot and Spot sees Jane and so-and-so sees so-and-so. Now, the reason that that might get boring is because the sentences are very short and it's not very different word choice. It's pretty repetitive <coughs> word choice. Word choice is pretty obviously the choice that you make in the words that you use. So when you write a response to a prompt, you don't want it to be Dick and Jane style. You want it to be interesting and you want it to be specific. So for instance, you would want to use a more specific word than mice or even dog. You might specify what kind of dog it is just to be more detailed. For example, the word nice uh, could be replaced by a word that describes in which way the experience was positive. So you, let's say you're starting to write about a really great time you had at the amusement park. 
You see, I, I took the biggest, scariest roller coaster. It was nice. Who uses nice to describe their experience on a roller coaster? It leaves people hanging there wondering, well, what do you mean by nice? Do you mean it was like a really calm roller coaster? Or do you mean it was exciting? Be peaceful, safe, beautiful, amazing, colorful, cozy. So in this case, it would make more sense to say it was really exciting because that's probably what your ride on the roller coaster was. Replace general words with specific words. Anyone want to tell me what general means? What does she mean by general words? Katie. Like ordinary words? Not quite. Okay. What word did I ask you to scribble out or replace today when you were writing? Like things? The word things? Yeah. So for instance, uh, I'll give you, and sorry, I know I'm using for instance a lot, but um, let's say I have a paragraph and I'm saying, I went to my room to clean out old stuff. I had a lot of it around. How would you be more specific there? How would you be more specific? Right. You can change things to, like, letters. Yeah, you could do a few different things. You could say, uh, I, in, for instance, let's just start with the I went to my room. I went to my room isn't super descriptive because they don't know if you walked, did you have to drive back from the grocery store, did you uh, just uh, step over from the kitchen. So you might say something like, uh, after finishing cleaning the kitchen, I decided to, I ran to my room excited about starting a new, uh, a new um, batch of spring cleaning. I looked around and I saw clutter everywhere. There were clothes strewn on the floor, and there was a moldy pizza on the wall, and there oh. was. Oh. Oh. She is oh. and, and there was a half-broken clock hanging off of my uh, lampshade. Okay, so you know instead of stuff, you can be descriptive, and maybe you don't really have a moldy pizza, although that would be a little bit dangerous. But, but you can still describe, you can still be more specific than stuff. And wouldn't it be such a shame if you really did have a moldy pizza and you didn't describe it and you just used stuff and then no one would laugh. So you replace general words with specific words. Even with sign like dog, you might think, well, dog is pretty specific. It's better than saying animal or pet, that's true, but you can say poodle. Tree, you could specify the kind of tree. Nice, we talk about nice, that's a really general word. You could say friendly. Loud, uh, booming, you know, you might specify how does it make you feel, is it kind of booming in your ears. So all of these words, they might look sort of specific, but they can actually be specified even more. So the reason that you want to be specific is so that when I'm reading what you're writing, it's more interesting, and it's also easier for me to visualize, to see in my head. Add specific details and descriptions of what things look like, smell like, feel like, and sound like. For example, the beach is beautiful could be replaced by the beach is beautiful, the sand sparkles in the sun, and the air smells like salt and shipwrecks. The beach is beautiful isn't too bad by itself, but when you add this sentence and you kind of start to see the whole picture, you see the sparkling sand and you smell the uh, salt and shipwrecks in the air. So let's do a collaborative writing activity. Add supporting details to the following phrases. My cat is crazy, the castle was disgusting, or my room is messy. So raise your hand if you think we should describe the crazy cat. Okay. Claire, how would you... Oh, sorry. Um, my cat was ripping up everything and running around the house. Very good. So instead of saying just my cat was crazy, or my cat is crazy, you would say, no, my crazy cat is ripping everything to shreds. Uh, leaving all these tatters of cloth all over the floor. She runs around the house and hisses at anybody and anything. She even spent a whole hour hissing at her own reflection in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> so, how would you add descriptive details to the castle was disgusting? Who's that one? Jack! Um, the castle tasted like moldy pizza that's been out for months. Okay, maybe the, the castle tastes like moldy pizza and not for a month. It was, it was gooey and gluey 
and it was and the fact that it was colored bright green did not help my stomach one bit. My room is messy. How would we add descriptive details? My room is messy. Um, it was like a tornado went through my room. Okay, it was as if a tornado had gone through my room. And maybe you might even say like a category, something tornadoes, whatever the highest category. So, and, and then go on to describe the damage or the wreckage. Um, and you might even say something sort of clever, like it was hard to believe that it had been a human tornado that was responsible. So it's really easy to add descriptive details, and it also makes it a whole lot more funny. When you just say the casserole was disgusting, it's sort of a vague image of whatever gross foods we've eaten, but we don't know how disgusting it is, like how gooey and gluey and green and moldy pizza-ish it is. So you can make your writing a whole lot more fun and a whole lot more interesting and a whole lot easier to visualize when you add descriptive details and use good word choice. So let's quickly review our goals. We want to use language effectively by exhibiting word choices that are engaging and appropriate for intended audience and purpose. That's sort of a pretty big, uh, that's a lot of big words, but what are they essentially saying when they say use language effectively by exhibiting word choices that are engaging? What are they saying? What are they asking for on that rubric? When they say all those big words, what are they really asking you to do, Amy? Like, make it interesting. I'm sorry? She said make it interesting and make it so that people want to keep reading. Exactly. Make it interesting and make it so that people want to keep reading. If you have a super boring, um, today I went to the mall. The mall was fun. The mall is pretty cool. That's not exactly very interesting. And if you're not interested by something, you probably don't want to give it a really high score. So. Use language effectively by exhibiting more choices that are engaging means make your words interesting. Don't make them repeat again and again. And don't be super general like, I went to the mall, it was cool. Those are very, very general words. So instead, I hopped in my friend's car and we drove at high speed down the interstate to go to my favorite outlet mall where we browsed through, where we went, um, where we uh, looked for a dress like hunters searching for deer. Okay, that's maybe, you know, that's the sort of weird one, but it's the best I can do. So, you want, to be, you want to have these sort of interesting word choices. So, when people think of these, like, hunters, sort of, searching for deer, and comparing that to people looking for a dress, then, you know, you kind of get this idea of them running through the store. So, the word choices that are engaging and appropriate for intended audience and purpose. Now, when they talk about the word choices being appropriate, it might lead, um, not just, you know, don't use bad words or something, but it might actually mean... Um, be sure to explain things that, that the audience may not understand. So if you're... Adora. Yes. Can time I just interrupt for just a second? Yep. Our sixth graders have to leave because it's time for their next period, so can okay. we pause for just a second? Sure. Them quickly, yes. and then we'll keep going. I, okay. yeah, I, was, so much. I was about to wrap up, but um, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. The rest of them are staying.